Hey everybody, Scoop Talk, Hugh Kelmer, Dustin Apiriak, Zachary Osterman from InsideTheHall.com, if you were not aware. Uh, Indiana... I actually got recognized in Broad Ripple by two guys the other night. Congratulations. It's a nice feeling. It was kind of weird. I've yeah. noticed that since I've become the columnist, like, random people inside Assembly Hall love to come up to me. Yeah. Never used to happen. Now, every game. At Park Tudor, we got in tons. Like, tons, yeah. It was weird. We'll keep reading. You guys keep writing. Yeah. I once got recognized in Lawrenceburg. Yeah. That anyway. was odd. Anyways, yes, we're we're C-list celebrities. <laughs> C? We even that high? Anyway, I mean it's Bloomington. There's not that many celebrities. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> point. Yeah, point. Like after the athletes and town officials. True. We got to move on here. Okay. Uh, Indiana six and zero for the first time in eight years. They were five and zero for the first time in eight years. So they're just continuing to win. Yeah. Uh, they've navigated a non-conference schedule uh, that was not challenging on paper, but was challenging in terms of how the games came. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I wrote today that they deserve credit for that. This this mm. could have easily been a uh, letdown game. Coming yeah. off of Thanksgiving, the sixth game in two weeks, still mm. a, a fairly young team in terms of experiencing these sort of things, and a, and a team that loves to run, that all kind of an opponent mm. that loves to run, that all could have added up to kind of a disaster, but it did not. Yeah, no, not not in the least. Really, disaster for Northwestern State. It got really really ugly in the second half. They just pretty much jumped all over. It was probably the best half of basketball that uh, Indiana's played so far this year. I mean, just, you know, just really stifling on defense, held them to under 30% shooting, and then just turned that into, uh, you know, a track meet on the opposite end, and they were just shooting the lights out, shot, I think, 67% in the mm-hmm. second half, I think 22 for 34, and they were just were not missing, and it just got... And it wasn't even like they were taking ridiculous shots that went in. They yeah. just kept on mm-hmm. getting good looks. Yeah, no, a great ball movement. Maurice Creek had a couple wide open looks for three that he knocked down. Some other guys had some wide open looks. Uh, I think they had, you know, like 11 fast break points in there. So, I mean, they were just like dunking on people. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was a lot of easy shots, putbacks. Uh, they, they basically just, you know, everything was within the offense. No one was trying to do anything crazy, and it just all worked. Zach, am I crazy in thinking that this is maybe the best they have looked to date? You mean under Tom Green overall? Oh, this season. This oh, season. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, Northwestern State kind of kept him at arm's length for about 10 minutes, and then that was it. I mean, I, I think it was 22 to 21. So Indiana outscored them from there, what, 70, 70, like, what, 79 to, I don't know. I'm not good at math. 70, <laughs> like 40 something. 79 like 40. to 44. Yeah. Right. Um, over 30 minutes of basketball. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's strong. Yeah. yeah. Or no, 89 to 30. No, I... Okay. It's 79. You're good. 79. You're good. 79. Anyway, the point is... A lot of points to not a lot They spread the ball around. Um, I think Terry six Hutchins and double from the figures. Andy Star told us that, that six and double figures is the most since 2007. And that was also, that was in the notes, so that is true. Yeah. And the last time, that's also the last time, I think, I don't know if you, you mentioned this, but that's the last time they broke 100 was 07. Mm. Yes. It was a different game, but it was Western Carolina was the... Hundred point opponent. game was a yeah. hundred point game, and Longwood was the six six guys in double figures game. No, they've th- this was absolutely the best that they have looked this season. Mm-hmm. Um, it, they just, I mean, it, it looked very methodical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they were, I mean, you know, that they, they were, they were never even. I don't want to say they weren't, they didn't care, but they didn't even look that emotional. They just kind of looked sort of locked collected in. and focused. Yeah, mm-hmm. locked in. 20 free throws made, um, like you said, didn't really force anything within the offense, kind of adjusted early to um, to maybe some, some defensive pressure and transition, forcing them mm. into longer possessions, and eventually just kind of did what they've done all year, which is use defense to turn into offense. And <laughs> Everybody offensively, I think, was who they were supposed to be. I guess in in that half, or maybe not, or, or was the best they can be right now. I mean, obviously Maurice Creek was not, you know, it can't be dominant, but you know he was getting his looks within the offense, knocked down four of seven three pointers, which is you know really encouraging that he seems like he's at least starting to maybe not get maybe if he's not getting the legs back, at least adjust to what he has, basically at least adjust to the leg strength that he's going to have. Maybe maybe he will never be completely full strength this year, uh, but he's figuring out how to shoot. Despite that, well, a really about, telling uh, moment was when he passed up the dunk mm-hmm. attempt to give it to Wofford. Yeah, Creek Creek knew he wasn't going to get up, 
Mm-hmm. That was a yeah. that was a heady as much move. as it was a selfish it, it, uh, unselfish it was, move. It was an, also an acknowledgement mm-hmm. of where yeah. he is right now. Right. Of, of the fact that it was like Daniel he, Moore he could have probably at the end of the day dunked it, but Watford was definitely going to dunk it. Watford was going to make it look like a high, highlight real thing. But yeah, I mean, there there was the possibility he could go up there and just not have the lead. Yeah. You know? Well, and and here's a question: Is I mean, isn't Maurice Creek? pretty dang valuable to this team if that's what he can be. Oh, I sure. Mean, if, you know, oh, I mean, maybe oh, he's yeah. not as prolific, but I mean, if right. he's a four, three mm. or four three-pointer a night kind of guy, yeah. that's, that's, that's still yeah. something they don't really have outside of Hull. Right. No, that's pretty much exactly what I was right. saying. Was every It was Creek was being who he can be for this team, and everybody else was kind of being who they can be for this team. Uh, yeah. But that, that, that until, you know, that until he's back to his freshman year self, and maybe that'll be this year, maybe that'll be next year, is probably what they're going to get out of him. Basically, is like when he he's going to mm-hmm. have, as long as he, he can have those nights where he is hitting from three, where, where he gets that shot back, you know that makes a big difference. I mean, he might never be the type of guy that can go off for 20, 25, 31 like he did a year ago this year, but exactly if you can have those kind of nights where he goes off from three, can get get a couple other buckets different ways, then that's what you need from him. And it was the same way with other guys. I mean, Rodell Jones was. You know, lights out mid range today mostly. Seven for eleven. And a spark plug early when it seemed like a lot of things weren't working. Yeah. Which is yeah, what he's really throws. been this yeah. year. The first half he has carried them mm. a couple of times. Yeah. Right, right. Jordan Holes found his looks within the offense, knocked down a couple of big threes, had six assists, facilitated really well. Uh, you know, had one of those kind of Jordan Holes games that was really solid. Yeah. And Oh the Depot and Sheehy again just provided really good sparks, especially defensively, uh, and those are just, guys that really turn into offense. Oh the Depot had five steals. You can tell they don't completely know everything that's happening right now, and they're right. not supposed to. They're freshmen. Yeah. But their hustle puts them on the court, and their hustle mm-hmm. allows them to make plays right. that earn them more playing time. Yeah. Oh the Depot had one stretch, and it was already determined by this point. But I think he had a steal and then a dunk. And then a steal on the inbounds and a layup. And then he harassed the guy off the court the entire way. Knocked the ball loose. Didn't end up with a steal, but was just driving Devin Baker nuts at that point. Well, he, and that's, he had I mean, a rebound right that. when he first came in. Right. When he the when the game was still close. Right. Yeah. Where he reached back. He may be, him and Walker are probably the only two guys on the team that get that rebound. Definitely. Uh, and then he immediately puts it back. Yeah. And he had a putback later on, a, a minute mm-hmm. or so later, too, that when they were – Pulling away from Northwestern State were key buckets. Yeah. He also he had a drive and layup, and, and I, I tweeted this. I don't think I've ever seen an Indiana player float. I mean, that, it, like yeah. it's just kind of that that illusion when you get so high that it seems like you okay, mm-hmm. he's going to come down here in a second, surely. So there's no way, no, he's not. Yeah. yeah no, mm-hmm. I mean, he he took off. I mean, yeah. outside the low block for kind of an up and under layup thing and he just kind of mm. hung there. He just yeah, he did, did just kind yeah. of stay up. I think he drew the foul on that one too. He, he was did. up there that yeah. long. Up and under layup it turns foul into a three point play. Good. It mm. was I mean it, it might have been the smoothest mm. single sort of drive Indiana's had from anybody all year. Right. Guys, guys they go to Boston College uh, next game but it gets a little bit tougher. It's on the road for the first time. Mm-hmm. Tom kind of hinted at tonight that this may not be the starting lineup we see. It's working right now. Right. Can, can they go forward and can they play a Boston College at Kentucky and survive a Big Ten season with the starting lineup? And if not, what should the starting lineup as of I right now? I think eventually it's going to have to be Elston instead of Pritchard. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's clearly um, – and, and he hasn't been great. I actually expected more from him early, to tell you the truth, just because of how much he transformed himself in the offseason. I thought maybe uh, the basketball IQ would be there as well. And I'm not saying it necessarily has not. It's been better. But I thought maybe he would have come along faster, but I think he's still way ahead of where Pritchard is um, right now. So I think that's that's the one you you probably change. You definitely have to make. Now I don't know if maybe you throw Oladipo in there, maybe put Jones at the point, Creek at the two, and Oladipo is something of a three kind of. Uh, maybe that works. Maybe it doesn't. But maybe he's better off coming off the bench. You know, I wonder if one. Elston replaces Holes at some point. And, and they, they go have, to three. And they and go to. Well, they go to if the they three have to get. If, well, yeah, I mean. Holes right now is playing the four on offense. I mean, Elston yeah. can only replace that's what, that's, Richard if right. Gee comes back. You, right. You, you can't. True. You can't just yeah. pull one for one Elston to Richard mm. unless you've got Gee in at center. Mm-hmm. True. Um, and then Gee probably replaces, I would think, Holes. Right. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I can go. I I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll I agree with, with you that. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I do wonder though if they do not get Gee back or they do not get Gee back in any kind of sh- any kind of short time period. If they can afford to have Elston and Pritchard on together on the floor for any sort of extended period of time, 
No. They have. Really I mean, not. they really have three big men at that point, and all three have problems with fouling. And two of them really want to do a lot of the same things with the no. ball. Right. And so then they've kind of got Tom Richard just blown down there in the lane. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We will see you later this week. We're dust and Purdue. Well, yeah, we'll be tomorrow. Indeed. A Wilkin Bucket game. We'll see what happens. Because you're excited about that, I'm sure. Yep.